Hi everyone, and welcome to Bob's Wood Stuff. I have a pretty interesting project for today. My roommate was gone for 10 days, so I ate all of his bananas. And then I thought, should I text him? Should I call him? Should I just buy more bananas? And then it became pretty obvious what I needed to do. The first thing I did was cut a bunch of lengths of two by four about the same length as a banana. This is nine inches. It's not quite as long as the banana with the stem, but that's okay, I'll add the stem later. And then I just trace the banana. I'm gonna use two different bananas because I don't want them all being exactly the same. I also need to remove these stickers and put them on parchment paper to save them for later. This will be very essential to the realism of the fake bananas. Now I'm going to cut out the rough shape of all these bananas with my bandsaw. Once I had my rough shapes cut out, I used a marking gauge to mark where I wanted all the bevels on my bananas. On some of the curves, I had to use a pencil instead of a marking gauge. Then I clamped it in my vise, and I cut curves with my Japanese pole saw to get to the depth that I wanted on each of the bevels. On my first banana, I didn't do this, and this ended up saving a lot of time on all the subsequent bananas. The goal here is to cut it to depth on two adjacent sides, going to the marks that I made for the bevel. Once I was done cutting those kerfs, I used a chisel to chop out most of the waste. You can see here I'm splitting the wood, and that's not great, but I'll be cutting this part off later, so it's not a big deal. After that, I used my Japanese saw to cut off the corners at the ends of the banana to help establish the shape before I start shaving it. Then I switched to my large slick chisel for paring down some of the waste. This worked really well because the long handle gives me a lot of leverage when I'm making shavings. It also helps that it's very sharp. Now I'm just paring down more of the waste and trying to establish a shape that I want on the banana and also get a smooth surface. Once I pretty much got to the depth that I wanted and got rid of all my saw curves, I started to use the draw knife to establish the actual bevel surface and to smooth out the whole thing. This was a little bit tricky because of the shape of the bananas. I ended up going uphill with the grain sometimes and downhill other times. I had to alternate between using the bevel up and the bevel down based on what the grain would allow. After I was done with the draw knife, I used the spoke shave on some parts of the banana to smooth it out. Now I'm finished with the rough carving on all four of the bananas. I took some 7 16 inch dowel and put it in my vise to cut off sections to use for the stems of the bananas. The length didn't need to be exact right now, but I wanted it longer than was needed, so I made them about 4 inches long. Using a 7 16 inch brad point drill bit, I drilled into the ends of the bananas so I could attach the dowels in there. One end was intentionally left wide so I could drill into it. I put masking tape on the ends of the banana and around the dowels so that when I glue it any extra glue doesn't get on it. And then I sanded down the ends of the dowels so they fit better in the holes. I want a bit of extra space so there's room for glue in there. Then I used a V gouge to carve out some grooves in the end of the dowel. This will give the glue a place to go and make it stick better. I squeezed some glue on the dowels and then brushed it on with an acid brush and put them inside the bananas. Then I used the mallet to make sure it was really tight. Using a small file, I started sculpting the joint where the stem meets the banana. This will make it look smoother and more realistic. While I was doing this, I also filed down the stem itself so it wasn't totally round and was more hexagonal like a banana. Here you can see the difference between the sculpted joint 
and the unsculpted joint. The sculpted joint looks a lot more natural than the other one. Using a spindle sanding attachment in my handheld drill, I put the drill in my vise and spindle sanded every bevel on all the bananas. This helped to get rid of most of the tool marks left from carving and also smoothed out the shape. Then I used a couple foam sanding blocks to smooth them out even more. The foam blocks are good because they contour to the shape of the object. I decided to coat the entire banana with some kind of glue. So here I'm testing wood glue versus Elmer's glue to see which one gets a more plasticky texture and which one is thicker and stronger. I also want to seal in the grain of the wood. I drilled four holes into a 2x6 at an angle so I could use it to hold all the bananas while I painted them. The wood glue performed best in my testing, so I brushed Tight Bond 2 on the whole banana. While it was drying, I brushed it with strokes parallel with the banana to establish subtle grooves on the surface and imitate the texture of a real banana. On the first two bananas, the moisture from the glue raised the grain a lot, so on the last two bananas, I decided to spray them down with water and raise the grain so I could sand it down before applying the glue. After all the glue had dried, I rubbed all the bananas with 4 aught steel wool to smooth out the texture of them before adding any paint. Then I applied two coats of spray primer on all the bananas. To get my yellow color, I cut a piece out of a banana peel and took it to the hardware store to have them paint match a sample. This worked out very well and the sample only cost $3. Then I started brushing the yellow paint onto the bananas, keeping my strokes parallel with the direction of the banana. I applied two coats of this yellow paint. Because the paint matching worked so well with the yellow, I took a brown piece of banana peel to the hardware store as well. Then using a very small paintbrush, I started painting blemishes on the bananas. The first thing I did was cover up any tool marks left from the carving process and any paint drips from the painting. Then I started painting the ridges and anywhere else I thought a blemish might appear on a banana, referencing a real banana frequently. I used a combination of dry brushing and mixing the paint with water to get the shades I wanted and to blend it in so it looked realistic. Gradually, I finished the rest of the bananas. At the point where I had most of the blemishes painted on, the project got a bit strange because they started looking like real bananas instead of something made out of wood. Even though I knew they were fake, my eyes told me they were bananas. Then I decided to make a third color by mixing the brown with the yellow and with a lot of water and then brushed it on to add more texture. This allowed me to add more subtle details like slight bruises and texturing to the bananas. Once the painting was done, I thinned out some matte polycrylic with denatured alcohol. Then I brushed three coats of it on the bananas, making sure to keep my strokes parallel with the bananas. I took the stickers I had saved earlier and sprayed the back of them with Super 77 spray adhesive and stuck them onto the fake bananas. I drilled some holes into a block of beach to hold up the bananas as if they were in a bunch. Then I cut off all the excess from that block. I started carving out the top of the block because it would be very difficult to get to after attaching the bananas. Then I marked out some waste sections I wanted to get rid of and cut them out on the bandsaw. I painted the wooden block yellow because I wouldn't be able to get to this spot after the bananas are attached. And then I added the brown color as well. To attach the bananas, I mixed some two-part five-minute epoxy with some of the brown paint because I wanted it to look opaque. Then I brushed it on the stems with a chopstick and inserted the stems into my block of wood. Once that epoxy had dried, I flipped the bananas over and did the same thing with the other side to fill in any remaining voids. Then I started to chisel off any excess from the block that I could. At this point it was very hard to carve because a bundle of bananas is pretty much impossible to clamp in a woodworking vise. I removed some excess material on my belt sander and then I used a triangular needle file to file grooves into the stem mass. I wanted it to look as if other bananas had been torn off of it, 
and to do this I needed it to have a fibrous texture. Then I rubbed the bananas down pretty thoroughly with some steel wool to knock off any shine that was left. The top of the stem bundle was much too smooth and didn't look real, so I used a dremel with a carving bit to route out some areas and make it look more like a fibrous end grain than a smooth surface. At this point the bananas were looking pretty real, so I placed them on the countertop and I waited for my roommate to find them. What? These are fake? I ate your bananas and I spent all week carving realistic bananas out of wood. Are you serious? Yeah. What the f***? <laughs> You're a lunatic. Is that for real? Yeah. You really made this? Yeah, I carved them and I painted them. They're made out of two by fours. Did you glue them together after you like made them? Yeah, I made like a thing, like a piece of wood with holes in it, and then <laughs> like the stems are dowels, and I epoxied it in there. <laughs> I was gonna tell you to eat them before I left. So this project was really fun, and it turned out well. I had hoped that one, he would think that they were real bananas, and two, he would think that they were his bananas, and be fooled long enough to pick them up. And this all worked out perfectly. He thought they were completely real until he picked them up and was very confused. And that's what I was going for. So I would say that Operation Banana Scam was a success. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me make more videos and makes more content like this possible. Thanks for watching.